This is the Power Break Podcast number 212, titled, The Power of Resilience. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobbrewbaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. So, hey, man, what's going on down there? Is it is it still raining every day? Is it starting to cool off? What's the deal? Uh, it's not really cooled off, but, uh, you know, the, the rains are there. We're in that pattern, although there's a couple of breaks... So they said, and then all of a sudden it rained this morning. So <laughs> it wasn't expected to rain at all. They hope, said no rain in sight. Hope you enjoyed and your break. Sudden, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you this, that uh, yesterday I was uh, actually on the on the uh, Causeway Trail going across from Tampa to Clearwater. I went, I'd gone across and I'd come back and I thought I would do some 10 second intervals, you know, really bear down for 10 seconds yeah. and, on the bike and then repeat that every 10 seconds and that's a good it's a good way to build your speed endurance anyway first one i'm all psyched up for it and i decided the point where i was going to start it and um i you know i I jumped on that on my bike i mean i jumped on the pedals really really hard and i broke broke my crank arm oh really yes look it broke it and and bent it huh so was and, it uh, so was it loose and it came off the spindle or was it what do you no, think? No. No. And uh, so <laughs> I didn't know what to think and here's how I got home. Because it was bent, it would not make the entire circle, so I had to um, put cl- put my cleat in and, and lock into that pedal, which by the way, since it was bent, it was turned sideways a little bit. So right. it was really hard to do anything. And the only way I could get home was to use my leg and lift it up and then push it down. I had about a quarter of the turn to be able to work with. You, my friend, were doing what us in the mountain bike industry call ratcheting. That's how we yes. that's how we avoid hitting roots and rocks. We ratchet over stuff. Wow. Uh, I was ratcheting all the way from uh so I was on a forty two mile trek and uh so I was coming back across the causeway and had, I, and this has happened about at mile 30. So I had a long oh way to my go. Goodness. And so, um, um, so what happened is I, I came across the little, I, I ended the trail and then I came across the, uh, Markham woods trail, you know, Markham yeah. trail. And then, and I was, I got about two thirds of the way across and, I called Jan and asked her to pick me up because I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't working for you. You know what gets me so, is I, I think, man, I think you need to cut down on the squats, buddy. You, you, gotta, you don't want to break all your stuff. <laughs> so I took it to the bike shop, uh, to Paul's bike shop, and, and uh, uh, Caesar and, uh, and, and uh, this other mechanic were giving me a hard time. And they, you know, and then, at first, and then Paul said, you know, that – that's a um, a fault of the Shimano Durace cranks. Oh, so this is a known issue. <clears throat> There's known issue. As a matter of fact, they said our friend Robert Bingham has done it seven times. <laughs> oh, my and, gosh. Uh, <clears throat> so That's much crazy. so. And they said <clears throat> what you need is to understand the s- signs that this is going to happen. And I noticed there was a squeak f- coming from there. And I thought it was my pedal. Oh, gotcha. Squeaking. You know, sometimes you'll get a little dirt in the in the action of the pedal. Yep, for sure. And uh, I thought that's what it was. And then, uh, no. So I'm listening for a squeak from now on. (laughs) Cut down on the squats, buddy. Just too strong. (laughs) Everyone, thank you for listening to the Power Break podcast. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. And as we always mention, thank you for taking time to leave a, a rating and or a review wherever you download the podcast. For some reason, this summer, we've had a spike in our listeners. So we give you, give thanks to the Lord for this opportunity and thank wow. you for telling others. That's awesome, about, man. Uh, That's great to hear. Yeah, about the podcast. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Thanks for telling others. And thanks for leaving those ratings and or review. We appreciate it very much. 
Well, JT, we're, today we're talking about the power of resilience. <laughs> maybe, maybe I need to cut down on those squats or something. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> the power of resilience, what comes to mind when you think about it, the power of resilience? Well, it's definitely not your crank arm. It showed little resilience this particular <laughs> time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's right. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's funny. You and I talked a lot about, uh, before we got started, we talked a lot about how, you know, resilience is just the, really, it's the process of you putting your nose to the grindstone, as they call it, you know, just persevering through no matter what happens. And you're, um, one of my friends down at Skycrest used to say, you know, you just got to push your own rock, you know, that's right. Stay focused, yeah. push your own rock. But the power of doing that is through those valleys in your life and through those peaks in your life, you build character, you build um, social strength, you build um, a stronger relationship with God because you, be, you become more reliant on him. Uh, there's all kinds mm -hmm. of great things. But uh, the power of resilience is really, um, you know, that's the Christian walk, really. It's, it's got to be about that resilience, which, um, and I think we'll talk a little bit about the prosperity gospel and why it's so dangerous because, you know, they, if, if you're walking well with God, you don't experience any issues according to the prosperity gospel, which is the exact opposite of what scripture says. It says that once you start walking with God, you're going to experience that, um, difficulty because now you're actually an enemy of Satan's because you're walking with the Lord. So now you've started that warfare kind of thing back and forth, but that's what I think about. I mean, what do you, what do you think yeah. about my friend? Well, I, obviously I wrote the article that's on the, our website, bobbrewbaker.com and it's entitled the power of resilience, but more than just a give up, never give up attitude. Although that's a good part of it. The power of resilience is seen in the life of a believer as the power of God goes through that believer in the ups and downs of life. Right. And that's what that's you right. were getting at there. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ has saved us for eternal life with him and will be with him in glory, but also to develop character within us. And that character is developed through the ups and downs of life. The Apostle Paul wrote it this way and says, we have this treasure of, in uh, jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. He said, we are afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed because we're always carrying in the body the death of the Lord Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. That's what we're talking about today, the power of resilience. Yeah, let's continue to talk more about that because that scripture is literally one of my favorite scriptures. It's just so... <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. But uh, let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to uh, your blog. But folks, if you haven't been over to BobRubaker.com, I will say it the way I say it every week. Get over there, check out the resources. At the very least, sign up for the blog so it shows up on Monday and you'll be ready for that power break that week. But let's continue to talk more about the power of resilience. Well, as I was talking about it on the article, I started out the article and I wrote that when do you when you do fall, and you will, <clears throat> a fall is just as important as any success because <clears throat> that's when you'll find that you get back in the uh, well, you get back in the game of life, the race of life. A matter of fact, if you study the backstory of those who have achieved great things, most have had moments of failure or experienced setbacks of one kind or another. And instead of dwelling on the failure or the pain of the fall, there's a determination to get back into the race of life and move forward. Here's how the Bible describes the life of one dedicated to serving God. In Proverbs 24 and verse 16, it says, The righteous falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Right. And what makes the difference? Listen to this text of scripture from Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. It says, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. <laughs> right. That, exactly. that is the key, right? Yep. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Rejoice not over me, my enemy, when I fall, because when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Notice, when I fall, not if I fall, 
to fall or experience moments of failures, I wrote in the article, or a setback, is, is, it's going to happen. Resilience is often defined as having the mental, emotional, and behavioral f- flexibility and ability to adjust to both internal and external demands. Resilience can also be defined by the experience of the Apostle Paul who wrote, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this and it should leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it's so contrary to what we in our culture believe strength is. Strength Mm -hmm. is um, being able to walk through those times relying on God and not trying to fake your way through it yourself. That is indeed strength, you know, Um, because I always think about Christ came here as fully God, fully man. And what fully God and fully man chose to do was to serve others and to be Mm -hmm. meek in the way that he walked on this earth keeping his power under control and using it appropriately, that is strength. Not running around, you know, with a big ego and and showing off and talking about yourself all the time and all those things. That's weakness, which is not what our society is really good about telling people and and portraying. You know, I think of the strongest people I'm, I know, um, you being one of them, and there's, there's a... There's a confidence in the way that you carry yourself that doesn't come off as arrogance. It comes off as power under control, which is that meekness that we talk about. So, so cool. That's man. right. Yeah. So cool. Well, Paul is the one who described in Ephesians chapter one that as he prayed for the church at Ephesus, he said, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation at the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And notice this, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might. Now notice, when we talk about that, the power that caused us to believe, the same power raised Christ from the dead, and is at work in us. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's there to help us in our journey of life. No matter what the Apostle Paul would face or we face, we can have the confidence that he will give us power to have the uh, enjoyment of resilience over whatever has brought us down for the moment. Right, right. So, so awesome. Yeah. And it's so straightforward, really, if if, in... Like I said, it's so contrary to what people will tell you, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty of teaching people to be self-reliant because in law enforcement, number one, you're, this may have changed recently because of a U.S. Supreme Court case, but um, if you're a public servant, you're really not allowed to talk about your faith while you're on duty. Um, and like I said, I think that recently changed with that uh, football coach that used to pray at the 50-yard line, and he got he got, oh, yeah. he got fired. Yeah. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court said he can do that. So, um, and there's no higher court, so that may change. But um, so when you, I was teaching law enforcement officers defensive tactics stuff, I really couldn't, you know, I I couldn't talk about my faith, so I had to teach them how to be you know, just kind of look at themselves in a way to where they were unbeatable, you know? Um, Mm. Whereas now if I could do it and not, you know, violate a rule or a law or whatever, it would be, Hey man, you know, God put you in this position and he's going to give you the strength to get you through it. So um, just rely on him and you'll be good. But I, you know, that's, that's our society. So it is what it is. Well, folks, the article is called The Power of Resilience. Check it out at BobRubaker.com. And the, the entire article is there. And uh, we just covered a little few of the highlights. The Power 
of resilience. So what else is happening, Bob? Anything you want the listeners to know about this week? Well, I think it is appropriate that we're, as we talk about the power of resilience, also talk about the, <laughs> the relief in suffering. And that's the name of the book that I wrote from the book of uh, James chapter 5. What you do when you are suffering and sickness or whatever it is, and uh, you find some relief. And that relief is not just escaping the problem, but again, finding the power of God in the midst of it. Relief in Suffering is the name of the book. You'll find it at BobRebaker.com. And while you're there... Uh, check out the sermon links that of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. In the midst of going through the uh, summer series in Psalms and covering some great material there. And this coming Sunday as we record, it's, it's like David has a lament with praise. Good uh, stuff. I'm just yeah. uh, just uh, thrilled with Anyway, it's like... Uh, Give me candy. Give me the Psalms. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You know, I, I actually would have thought that you were going to talk about um, power in the valley. That would have been my guess. But I like relief and suffering, too. Both of them uh, well, are I, fantastic. I, thought, I, 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 I kind of struggled between them, but I thought relief and suffering, it does give you power to... Of resilience as you uh, tap into the power and the relief that God has given you in the midst of suffering. Well, check out the book, Relief and Suffering, and the sermon links to the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. It's all at BobBrewBaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT along with Bob Brubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at JT at BobRubaker.com and we'll get to answering that on an upcoming Power Break podcast. So question number one from the spiritual aspect of life. So are we saying as a person follows Christ, they seem to have an advantage when it comes to resilience? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We are That's, definitely saying yeah. that. <laughs> As you mentioned, uh, that, you know, some people say, you know, that it's a matter of digging down deeper in yourself or finding something. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's understand what the scriptures teach. Yes, the scriptures do teach that we're going to go through times of difficulties. Jesus said, in this world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And uh, so we understand that when we tap onto his power, the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us, and quite frankly, the power of his word which really is the power of the Spirit working in us and through us, that even though we fall down, we're going to rise again. But he says the wicked stumble in times of calamity. So again, from the book of Micah, we quoted this several times, but listen to this. Rejoice not over me, O my enemy. When I fall, uh, I shall rise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. That's the difference right there. Yeah, you know, and I, I can't help but think about there was a sermon um, that Louis Giglio did, and he talked about this very thing. What he said was, you know, he used to think about his Christianity uh, when he first started to walk with the Lord, and he always looked at it at, with a Christ and me attitude. So he believed that, like, it, his relationship with Christ was almost like a... Um, a tag team wrestling match. So he'd be in, he, he'd be in the ring and he'd be um, getting it done himself. And then when he couldn't do it any longer, that was when he tagged Christ in. You know, he said, yeah. and then all of a sudden he realized what the scripture actually says is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yeah, that's yeah, he's the. He's the power within us as, yes. as scriptures teach. So it's not we yeah. we go as hard as we can and then we and then once we can't go any longer we we look to Christ to help us. It's we allow Christ and the Holy Spirit to work in us all the time. It makes a huge difference, so, right? Back back in the olden days. <laughs> the olden days. When was a, that? Because my <laughs> kids think I was born in the olden days, so well, in the olden days, back in the 70s uh, and 80s, there used to be the uh, bumper sticker said, God is my co-pilot. As oh, that's say, right. You know, that's right. Uh, and tell everybody you're a Christian. <laughs> and I heard guys say one time, 
If he's your co-pilot, you're in the wrong plane. He's the, either the pilot or he is the or pilot. Nothing. That's right. You're in the wrong plane. I love you're, it. You're just simply the passenger. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's a matter of, of of he working in us and through us, as the Apostle Paul said, that when he prayed to the Lord three times and asked him to take away the thorn of the flesh, and my, he said, what? My grace is sufficient for you. Okay, so when you fall, his grace is sufficient. Or as Micah says, when I fall and I sit in darkness, he says, the Lord is the light to me. Right. And that's right. Paul grabbed that power of Christ when he said, well, well, bring it on. He says, I'll most gladly have these weaknesses, infirmities, whatever it is, because when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong in the Lord. I can bounce back with his power. That's right. He looked at, at the weakness and the struggles the way James says to look at them, count it yeah. all joy. He looked at it as these struggles are going to make me focus on the thing that's most important in my life, which is God and my relationship with God. Um, yeah, so it, it's throughout Scripture you see that people come to that conclusion over and over again um, throughout their life, uh, that throughout the prophets, throughout um, obviously Paul and his ministry. Uh, James and his ministry, it's, it's over and over again. It's, that's what the conclusion is. Um, yeah. So question number two from the mental aspect, and I'm so glad that you brought this up because you and I really come from the same background with this. Um, resilience was kind of pounded into our heads as we played sports, right? Um, yeah. But what can a person who has never been in sports do to develop a resilient attitude towards the setbacks in life. So, um, you know, I know I love to have my kids involved in sports and I actually like when they have to struggle their way through a part of it or they fail and mm -hmm. they have to pick themselves back up because they're learning character and they're building, um, their faith throughout the whole thing. So, um, you know, what, so what, what do we tell that person? that's never experienced that because they just didn't play sports when they were younger. Well, practically speaking, and when you face setbacks, it's important to get a refocus on your goal. And that's what happens. Like you were running down the way with, with the ball, and then all of a sudden you're tackled. and you. <laughs> Nobody ever tackled me. I was perfect. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, so you have to refocus on the goal and assess where you are and what needs to be done to get back in the race. Um, you do that very quickly when you're tackled in football and then you got up and get back to the huddle because there's the next play. That's right. Right. And so that's here's where it is. OK, so when a person fails, they have to kind of understand they need to refocus and get back in the race by focusing on the goal and uh, assess where you are and what needs to be done. And maybe for the Christian who has never played sports, it's refocus on the goal of pleasing Christ right. and tapping into his power. That's right. And connecting with him and fellowship with him and realizing that his promise is that I will never leave you or forsake you, that we can boldly say the Lord is my helper. So when we understand, we can tap into that power as we get back in the race. Uh, the, the point is, the longer you dwell on the past or the pain of the moment, the harder it is to get back into the race. I'm sure that if, uh, you know, when you were tackled in football and you were on the ground, if you sat there saying, oh, boy, I, don't, uh, I think I got this problem here in my leg. I've got this problem in my arm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> First of all, they had blown the whistle and say, hey, get up or get out, right? Uh, That's so. <laughs> pretty much it. I used to love rugby, man. They, they would play around the injured people. Like when I played rugby, yeah. like, you know, there'd be somebody over there with like, he needs stitches now because someone kicked him in the face. And he's rolling around on the crowd, and they're just playing around him. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Or somebody pulls him off the field. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of life, though, you know. Yeah. Well, anyway, so if you're, if you're physically, mentally, emotionally, or even financially injured, you may need to work on healing and restoration, but you can still be resilient by taking the initiative to do whatever you can. Right. That's okay. right. So that's, that's kind of like the practical side of this. And the first thing you can do, no matter what, is to get a refocus on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the power right there. That's the leading of the Spirit, by the way. And the Spirit of God will lead you back to the Word of God, and you tap into the promises of God, which will give you strength and encouragement to keep going. 
So it's like it's like the Apostle Paul. You need some encouragement. Second Corinthians four verses seven through ten. Check it out whenever you can. That he says, I ha- we have this treasure of, in jars of clay to show the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Why is why do we have this weakness so that nobody can under- nobody can say, hey, I'm doing this on my own. Yeah, that's Sorry, right. Sorry, you're not. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, we are. He says we're afflicted in every way. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Jan and I looked at these verses when we were first married, and we used to recite these verses that we're afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're struck down, but not destroyed. We're always carrying in the body the death of the Lord Jesus. So the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Yeah. You know, and the thing I love about, you know, Scripture also talks about being let let tomorrow be anxious for itself. You have enough to do today, so focus on little chunks. Like a lot of times, like in like in football, um, if you went out and you were on your opponent's twenty yard line, you know if you look at that as I got to go eighty yards, well, that's a little bit different than I got to go ten for the first down. It's a lot easier to break that thing down, play by play by play. You know, and the stuff that's most impressive is those long, grinding drives, you know, that start like on your opponent's 10-yard line, and you go 90 yards, and you take up half the clock by doing it, right? That's what the Christian life is. It's a grind. It's taking it one step at a time instead of looking at it as, I got to get to that I got to get to the top of that mountain. No, you just got to get over the ridge. Do that, and then you think, can then you can worry about that, right? I think you're giving me inspiration for a new power break called the Daily Grind. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, there you go, man. Um, I know. think that I think that's the name of a coffee shop, but maybe the, I think that would work though. I think it the would. Daily Grind. Yeah, I folks. When you see that come out, just know that JT is my inspiration. <laughs> man, I'm glad I inspire somebody. That's good. Um, (laughs) all right. So let's move on to question number three, going to the physical side of life. So let's talk about how do we get better? So what are some of the keys to getting faster when it comes to running, cycling, swimming, rowing, whatever it is that that our listeners do, what's the key to getting faster and better at it? I think there are four, and as I've looked at different resources on this, and and I think you'd agree this kind of way, way it happens. Number one, improve your form. Now, that may need some outside help, like a coach, to oh, help 100%. you on that. Yep. But form is so important. Second, tweak your equipment. Maybe you need some new running shoes. Uh, maybe you need uh, one of those lights that go on your head while you're running in the dark. Uh, maybe you need a new bike fit. By the way, I got a new bike fit. This is tremendous. I can't wait to ride my bike again because while I took it into the shop of Paul Williams yesterday, I had a, my I went through a bike fit with him. Oh, that's and, awesome. With your new crank arm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he went the new crank arm, yep. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, uh, tweaking your equipment. Uh, third is maximize your nutrition, hydration, and sleep. That all adds to it, okay? But four, and this is the important one. Yeah, this is the one nobody wants to hear, but go for it. <laughs> intervals. Yes. Intervals, Intervals. Folks. Intervals. Now, that's what I was trying to start yesterday, some intervals. <laughs> I guess maybe that I was. Uh, what happened to me while I started my intervals yesterday when my crank arm broke on my bike, that uh, it, was, it was so that I would have something to talk about and relate it to intervals today. But we used to do intervals, remember, in That's right. Island Way of States. It. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's... It, anyway, those are four things. Any, anything you need to add to that, JT? I think you have a good handle on well, getting Well, you, you know... It, Improving form, I think, is the biggest, to be honest with you. And I think it's the biggest yeah. just simply because, so, you know, I've been taking, I, I've been uh, taking mountain biking lessons. I've been with a coach now for a while. And he said something to us probably about a month ago. What he said was, listen, you guys have all the skills that you need. Your form is good. Now you got to get used to doing it faster. Now you've got to make Hmm. it muscle memory. Now you've got to make it to where you can make those decisions faster. Um, And the interesting part about mountain biking is 
intervals are not your problem. You will always have intervals. Why? Because you're going uphill, then maybe downhill for a couple of seconds, and then uphill again. Um, so you're always kind of building in these really hard efforts and then these kind of um, moments where you can recover. My problem yeah. is locking my heart rate into one like zone and staying there. That's actually my problem. So what I find myself doing is taking out the e-bike and using the e-bike to keep my heart rate where it needs to be on a long ride. Oh, so there you um, go. Yeah. So I would, you know, for me, intervals aren't the problem. It's the, you also got to have that base, Bob. Base is super important. And that's, that's right. and that yeah. gets lost when it comes to that. But I think the biggest thing is work on your form and get a coach. I mean, Amy's getting ready to do the New York Marathon, and she's got a coach. I mean, it, there you go. always having that person to look at it in a non-biased way and say, hey, you got to do this, 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 and this, or your form is off or whatever, because it's really hard to coach yourself and be honest. <laughs> That's right. Well, folks, when it comes to getting faster, like everything else, it does take discipline. As we always say, discipline does make the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 212. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobBrewBaker.com and listen for our answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick word for Relief in Suffering, the book that we're talking about this week that you'll find at BobBrewBaker.com. It's a really important book that will help you through times of difficulty. It's called Relief in Suffering. Check it out today. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.